Successful online content is engaging, cohesive, and original. Um, I think the, the most important part of successful content is it being cohesive. So having all of your, your online content looking very similar, looking the same, but also kind of utilizing your, your brand and its strengths um, is what makes content uh, successful. Um, also utilizing different types of content also makes it successful. Um, at the time that I was at the National Academies, there were often times where we created communication toolkits um, that consisted of different types of, of content, but were also cohesive, engaging, and original. They were, um, you know, developed and created by graphic designers and artists. Um, and so within those communication toolkits, you have different videos, you have graphics, um, you have dynamic scrolling web pages. Um, and so within the brand and the, the colors, the schemes are all cohesive. They're all similar. They're all the same. You know, it's, it's the same content. It's the same theme, um, but it's just different ways to engage your audience. And so I think that that's what successful online content looks like. Um, it's different. It's original. It's engaging and it's cohesive. So I think connecting with the audience virtually is very similar to connecting with your audience in person. Um, you often don't want it to seem like you're kind of presenting. You kind of want to keep your audience in a conversation um, or you at least want to keep them engaged uh, with the content or the theme that's going on. Um, there are times where you can host polls, you can host uh, Twitter chats uh, during breaks, you can host uh, all different kinds of um, kind of virtually simultaneous content that's going on at the same time so that the audience isn't bored. So the audience is kind of working alongside you instead of um, you looking at the, the audience instead. So I think just keeping your audience engaged and having that personal conversation, that personal connection um, is how you can connect with your audience virtually. Leveraging audience insights, I think, is probably the best way to create user-generated content. Um, so once you learn what your audience wants or what they're thinking about, you can kind of tailor your content the way that you want it to uh, based off of your, your audience. Um, a lot of times, user personas are very insightful. Um, so just speaking with your audience beforehand and then creating a user persona or just a small fictional character um, that tells you what your audience is looking for, what they want, kind of their desires, uh, those types of information that allows you to create the content that uh, your user wants um, and that your user will come back for and that your user will notice your brand more. Um, so always connecting with your audience, doing member interviews, doing your user personas, finding that target demographic information is incredibly helpful and incredibly important. Um, and it should always have a purpose. So once you know what your purpose is for your members and your users, um, that's the best way to create user-generated content. Yes, I say there's always a guideline for too much. You don't want to overwhelm your, your members, your users, um, your audience. You don't want to overwhelm them, but you also want to drive them to learn more about uh, what it is you're, you're promoting. Um, so you, you want to kind of give them a little bit of a tease of this is what we can provide for you. This is what we do. This is our brand. But you also want to drive them to social media. You want to drive them to your, your web page. So you want to give them a little excitement, but you also want to tell them that there's more and that you want to keep them coming back. Um, so I always say that there, <laughs> there, is, there can be too much. As much as you want to showcase how great your brand is and how great your product is, but you do, you want to, you want to give them the full experience and drive them to your web page or to your, your dynamic content that you're creating. Um, and with events, you can also do that as well. Even if it's virtual, you can, you can showcase a little bit of, of what you have and what you do and how great it is, but you also want to drive them to show them how cool your, your social media is or show them how cool that dynamic scrolling content is that drives them to, you know, purchase that product. And so sometimes there is too much is too much. <laughs> 